The fort of Mikuni has flourished for centuries. This is where Echizen crabs, the quintessential taste of winter in Echizen, are loaded off the fishing boats. Echizen crabs actually refer to male snow crabs that come into ports in Fukui Prefecture. Since old times, crabs dedicated to the emperor were sourced from here. This is an inn in the port town, which serves crab meat that satisfies even the most ardent of crab aficionados. The owner of the inn, Ichiro Kitayama, is checking the movements of fishing boats with binoculars from the lobby. He is after the boats that do crab fishing off the coast of Ishikawa to the east of the harbor. <laughs> やっぱり鹿を buys the crabs by selecting from the boats that catch the crabs off the coast of Ishikawa. The crabs are kept alive in a tank of seawater at the basement of the inn. They are slowly aged over a period of 10 days or more. Kayo Kitayama, the owner's wife and the inn's vice manager, picks out the crabs when they are ready to be eaten. She says the timing differs by each crab. <laughs> あの、その、ま、個人個人っていう言い方はちょっとおかしいですけど、so that's a heavy responsibility. It's a big responsibility. And I, I take it, that's my job. Yeah, yeah. I think you should do your job. Right. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't do their job because they don't like their job. I don't get that. You know, like if you go to a, like a coffee place and the, and the kid looks at you like, eh. And I'm like, I didn't come to your house to ask you for coffee. I, it's a coffee place. <laughs> you work here. Your clothes match the building. I had a right to expect <laughs> And you're closer. closer to the coffee machine. I don't know why, and I need coffee. I don't know why someone wouldn't want their job to go really well. Right. And I, I think usually it's because they're 20. Because they're 20-year-old 20 20 douchebags that right, don't right, want right, to do... Right. I am prejudiced against 20-year-olds. Right, really? Yeah, because 19, you're still your parents' fault. Right. 20, you're technically an adult, but you still haven't done anything. Right. Like, 20-year-olds at their jobs are always like, this job sucks. Yes, that's why we gave it to you. <laughs> You haven't done anything. You've never, you've just been sucking up resources. You've just been taking food and love and education and iPods and just taking it and judging it. You know, I like that. Oh, that sucks. You're like a big orange on a tree that's rotting, and the tree's like, get off. What? Just, where do I want to go? Like, you're hanging on. Yeah. You definitely have never done a thing for anybody. Right. Yes, you went to uh, Guatemala on a school trip, and they told you you helped, but you totally did not help. <laughs> you were a way bigger pain in the ass. <laughs> you got your picture on Facebook with a shovel, and they got screwed. <laughs> they hate you now. Well, how, how, how are your children doing? Are they all right? <laughs> how are they? My 
white kids are good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can't, on paper, they're great. They're two little white girls in America. Right, right. I mean, what? Sometimes I look at it that way. I look at them, I'm like, you can't say anything. Yeah. You're, you're doing awesome. Right. Just boilerplate great lives. I gave my daughter medicine the other day, and it was bubblegum flavored, so that she'll take it. Bubblegum flavored medicine? Yeah, you get me like Tylenol, it's bubblegum flavored. Oh, it's not it's methadone or anything. It's no, 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 it's bubblegum flavored. <laughs> I get her, she's got a fever, Tylenol, and bubblegum flavor, and she goes, ew. I'm like, F you, ew. You can't say ew. I'm sorry. It's medicine. It's medicine, right, exactly. It's medicine. Most children don't have medicine. Right. Most children in the world, they get sick, they die on a rock with a bear eating them. That's, that's how they handle it. He's got a sniffle, ring the bear bell and put him outside. Whatever they do. <laughs> You're a little white girl in America. You wear clothes made by children your age professionally. You don't get to say ew about your bubble gum medicine. I never heard of bubble gum medicine. Well, I mean, you got the holidays coming up. Are you doing any any plans? Any no, you seem I, like a very I, holiday guy. I, I, can I just, yeah. I just want to say I'm not trying to say that if you're white, you can't complain. Right. I'm just saying that if you're black, you get to complain more. Right. right. Because <laughs> you can't. There you go. No, no, don't tell the band that. No. Yeah. Because you can't. You get this right. You can't take people's, like, historical context away from them. And right. Everybody wants this to. Like, white people are always like, come on. It wasn't us. Like, they want black people to forget everything. Like, every year, white people add 100 years to how long ago slavery was. Yeah. I've heard educated white people say slavery was... white people say slavery was 400 years ago. <laughs> no, it very wasn't. It was 140 years ago. That's two 70-year-old ladies living and dying back to back. <laughs> That's how recently <laughs> you could buy a guy. That's right. And it's not like slavery ended and then everything has been amazing. <laughs> like, it just... Oh, I'm glad that's over. Oh, yeah, it just ended like a clean <laughs> where you don't have to wipe. Just boom. And then it's just been... You gotta, you gotta remember that if you meet a black person, they have gray hair, they remember a time they weren't allowed to use a certain toilet. So give them a little, you know, time to be cranky. And by the way, white people have our own thing that we, yeah. stuff that we went sure, through sure. That, that hurt us that we have to cope with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really yeah. hard for us. And we're still, so it's pretty even. <laughs> so, so it's even. Yeah. It's even. All right, be right by the Starting the HBO series Lucky Louie, please welcome very funny guy, Louis C.K. Thank you. Hello, how are you? <laughs> nice to be here. I had a good day. I um I went shopping today. I had to buy a, a, a belt because my pants uh, here here's the problem. Uh, you know when you get fat. And uh, your first, your pants get tight, and then uh, you get fatter because it's not like, oh, I'll stop eating. <laughs> and then, and then you eat, all your pants hurt, like every pair of pants hurts. And and then you eat even more because more you're like, screw it now, man, and you just get depressed. <laughs> but here's what happens: if you get fat enough, your belly starts to push out, and your pants won't even hang in the normal place. And then they get down to your pelvis, and then they feel loose, and you're like, hey, losing weight, man. <laughs> I guess I'm, I ate my way through to the other side. <laughs> I've gotten rid, look at this, this is ridiculous. I have, this is, the, the crazy part is that my belly hits my pelvis at a right angle. It just goes right in. 
Like when I'm in the shower and I'm scrubbing, when I get down there, I gotta cut in like this. I actually have to scrub. <laughs> Or else that gets filthy down there. It's like a... It is. It's like a theater seat. I find pennies and receipts and stuff. Yeah. And the worst part is I'm 39, so it's not like I'm going to get better. This is it or a lot worse for the rest of my life. It's not like I'm going to be all ripped when I'm 48. It's over. And uh, I got tits, too. I just got... I just got boobs. I got boobs on my body. How depressing is that? That is... A really weird moment in a guy's life when you catch your boobs in the mirror and you get all these weird feelings, you know? They must be the same feelings that a teenage girl has when her... But it's the only thing that a 12-year-old girl and a 40-year-old man have in common is that moment when you're going... Nothing! You gotta carry your books like this. It's depressing. I, I think it's because uh, I eat uh, huge amounts of food all the time. I was at a party recently uh, for my daughter and her, she had, her friend of hers had a party so I had to be in a room full of awful people at a birthday party and uh, but then there was a plate of cookies and once I saw the cookies I'm like that's all of this is that now I'm gonna eat every cookie and you gotta have like a strategy for how often you go to the cookie plate and keep rediscovering it like you haven't seen it <laughs> The first time you see it, you're like, oh, boy, somebody brought cookies. Yeah, I gotta go ahead. You gotta go like this, like, uh, I don't have to have one, but I don't want to insult anybody. And you eat one. Oh, I can take it or leave it. You walk away the whole time, radar back there. Later on, different group of people around. Oh, I want the cookies. Somebody brought them. them, 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 them. If people start to notice how much you're eating them, you have to say something like, these are crazy. What's with these cookies? They're weird. It's like, no, it's not that you're a fat piece of crap that can't stop eating. They're insane cookies. I love all food. I like food from other countries. I was in Chinatown. I know that's not another country, but I was uh, in Chinatown, and I went to the... Uh, to, to the, this grocery store, and they had weird food in there. They had, I swear to God, they had duck vaginas. They had duck vaginas in a big barrel with a scoop stuck in it. And I'm looking at these duck vaginas. First of all, I'm thinking, could we possibly dominate a species more than that? And that we're selling their vaginas in barrels? Ducks are like, dudes, enough already with that. I didn't get any. I didn't buy any because I don't want to know. What if I love duck vaginas? What if I, oh, I love duck vaginas? They're so good. It's not like a million things taste like a duck vagina. Four in the morning, I gotta have a duck vagina right now. Chinatown's closed. I gotta go to the park with a knife. Where's a duck? Thank you very much, folks. Thank you.